Justice League issue 40 sees rural Minnesota fields blown up by a being whom was punched into them by Superman. Superman and the arriving Justice League try and determine who the man is, learning from Batman's tech that he's a Daxamite. Green Lantern gets closer look at the man, thinking that he might be Sodom Yat, fellow former Green Lantern. But the being hits him with his heat vision. The League spring into action as Wonder Woman saves Flash from the heat rays, soon overcome by them as well as Superman. But then Superman decides that it's time to fight fire with fire, powering up his heat vision to combat Sodom's. Green Lantern uses his construct however to cover Sodom Yat's eyes, ordering him to stand down. Sodom soon realises that he's talking to Jon Stewart, and Jon tells them that Yat was a lantern like him, who was voluntarily discharged with honours. Sodom says that he didn't know who he would find on Earth, but since it's Jon and the League, they might still have a chance to stop the invasion that's coming. Suddenly Sodom's vitals begin crashing, thanks to the elements existing on Earth that he isn't acclimated to. The League take him to the Hall of Justice, where in Superman's healing chamber, Sodom apologises for attacking the team. He explains that he is now Senator Sodom Yat, leader of the Daxum Isolationist Party, and he's there to warn them. He knows that the League know his people's history, that they are descended from Kryptonian colonists and have always forbade contact with other races, but now a new breed of Daxamite soldier has been bred via genetic manipulation, possessing all of the Daxamite Daxamite's power with none of their weaknesses. The one who created them is the Eradicator, and he's leading them to remake a new colony on Earth, thanks to its proximity to the Yellow Sun and because the only Kryptonian threat lives there, Superman and his family. Superman knows that the Eradicator must have turned to Daxam because they are descendants of Krypton, and now because he didn't stop the Eradicator last time they fought, it's coming back with friends. Green Lantern reassures Clark that he has friends too, and they could use Sodom as well, who explains that the Daxamites are too lethal of a race to interact with other races, hence why he's formed an isolationist political party. Batman says the Daxamites have their kryptonite vulnerability bred out of them now, so what else does Superman dislike or hate? Clark says he doesn't hate things, but he knows he doesn't like magic because of its effect on him. Green Lantern doesn't trust magic, but Wonder Woman knows of a powerful sorceress who might be able to help them. Madame Xanadu. Batman says that he will make contact with her while Superman, Wonder Woman and Flash stay with Green Lantern in the hall, monitoring for anything approaching Earth. Batman heads to London, having Alfred remotely pilot the Batplane back to the Batcave. Heading into the streets of London, Batman begins his search for the mysterious Madame Xanadu. Clark meanwhile is met by John up in the sky above the Hall of Justice, and John reminds himself how few in human history actually get to see the view they get to see. Clark reminds him that he isn't human, but John disagrees since despite all this talk of Krypton and Daxum, he is one of them, especially since he has to pay too much on a Metropolis apartment in rent. And what's more human than that? Clark knows that the world knows him as Clark Kent, and hopes they will eventually see him as just a guy from Kansas and not an alien from Krypton. But John knows that he's asking the wrong guy, since he's never worn a mask, since if he can't put his face to something, he shouldn't be doing it. He admires Clark for what he did, and none of them saw it coming, and maybe that's why Batman isn't too happy as of late. Clark has known Bruce for a long time and knows that with Alfred gone, he's not accustomed to someone who isn't him not making the plans. John knows that the battlefield is no place for egos, but Clark knows ego is not Bruce's problem. Trust is. Soon Wonder Woman alerts them to contact from space from the Daxamites, and Flash says that the computer has tracked their landing location, learning that they plan on hitting Metropolis first. Superman races off to his home as Flash and Wonder Woman head to join him. Diana stops Barry for a moment, wondering if he's fit to fight since in the battle with Sodom before he couldn't stop the being properly. Barry says that he only hesitated as he speeds off, telling Diana to catch up. Green Lantern arrives in Metropolis, contacting Batman to find out where Bruce is at with recruiting his new asset. Batman however doesn't respond since he's been captured by Madame Xanadu, ensnared in her magic. Xanadu says that she is protected by the city and the ley lines there, but Batman isn't. Bruce knows that it will take some convincing and the League will need to hold their own against the villains as Eradicator and his Daxamite soldiers arrive, looking to usher in a new age of Krypton's legacy. Justice League issue 40 was a fantastic action-packed beginning to a new era of the Justice League under Robert Vendetti. I love how much of this first arc was set out in this first issue. We've got Daxamites, Eradicators, Madame Xanadu, all really cool and fun things to play around with with the League. The book also has some great quiet moments as well when 
when it's not pitting the Justice League against Daxamites, specifically between Clark and Jon Stewart. I love the two talking about being human and what being human is and how Clark definitely is one despite his extraterrestrial heritage. One part that had me confused however was Alfred is alive in one panel, but then mentioned by Superman that he's dead in another. Either the alive Alfred that we actually saw on the panel drawn is Batman's computer AI program that he has, or it was an actual mistake on the editorial's part. Still, it doesn't detract from an awesome story that is set up here, and I'm very excited to see what's happening in this book. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10.